Good morning. <clears throat> we'll get started in about uh, three minutes. We'll allow folks to come into the room. Thank you all for coming. All righty, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, once again, good morning and welcome to the session um, on supporting literacy, speaking and listening uh, while using Soundtrap. Uh, so today's session will cover, um, you know, different uh, facets of, you know, speaking and listening, uh, but most importantly, you'll get a chance to see Soundtrap. Um, if you have not used Soundtrap before, uh, today is the day you'll get a chance to use it. Um, and if you've used it already, um, then uh, welcome back. My name is Justin Grimes, and I am one of the um, enterprise success managers here at Soundtrap. Um, I've been at Soundtrap for three years, um, and this is my second year uh, working in San Francisco Unified. I'm really excited to work with you all again and see the amazing work that the, not only the teachers, um, you all, but also your students will be doing this year using Soundtrap. So um, today's goals is um, we're going to learn and define um, how active listening and speaking can contribute to increased student comprehension and student voice. Um, we're going to actually go into the studio and discover some of the studio features that we have. 
um, we're going to explore soundtrack resources um, so that you'll be able to see, you know, how can you start to integrate this into your classroom? And then you'll learn how Soundtrap can be used as a tool for small group instruction. Um, I'll show you uh, specifically a part of the studio that I think that you will really like that will help with this skill. And yes, thank you. Uh, if you want to continue to um, type into the chat box your name, grade level, and the school that you're from. Thank you all. So today's quick uh, agenda, we're going to do a sound check and it's gonna be like a quick little icebreaker, but you're gonna have the time to do it. Um, a studio activity where we listen, reflect and respond. A studio tour, which will go inside of the Soundtrap studio and I'll show you a couple of features. Um, then you'll, you'll have a moment to actually go inside of the studio. Then we'll wrap it up by listening, by looking at some resources, Q and A. As always, if there's any questions that you may have, feel free to put it in the chat box. Um, I see that you all are already going in and you know starting to introduce yourself. So yeah, feel free to use that chat box as freely as possible to ask any questions. And then when you all have some work time um, or we'll find time inside of the session, I'll stop and address those questions. So um, as you know, summer um, has ended, um, but um, I want us to uh, select a poem from a list that I'm going to provide you, and you're going to specifically look under the category for children. So I'm going to give you, give me a second, let me share this link inside of the chat box. Right. link that I just shared with you inside the chat box um, is from Poetry Foundation. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the category that says for children. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So you'll click on the on the link that I provided you. You'll scroll down to the section that says for children. And I'm, I want you to take the next three to four minutes um, to look for the different um, poems under that category. And then I want you to pick one um, and then we're gonna use it later. So right now you're gonna click on the link that I provided inside of the chat box. You're gonna scroll down to the category that says for children, as I'm showing here on the screen. And then you're going to select one of those poems. So I'll give us the next three to four minutes and then I'll mute myself and then we'll come back.
All right, if we can come back together. Um, hopefully by this time you've gotten a chance to select at least one of the poems that we're gonna be using later on in this session. So moving forward uh, with the presentation, um, let's first dive into why speaking and listening. Um, I know you may wonder like, okay, what does soundtrack have to do with speaking and what does it have to do with listening? Um, but we're gonna go inside of the studio um, in a few minutes and then I'll start to show you how some of these things connect to each other. But to start it off, why speaking and listening? So as you can see, speaking and listening is essential to students' comprehension of literacy because it centers student voice, promotes accountability, and increases in it, and it increases their ability to have strong reading comprehension skills. So when we think about it, these are things that we already are doing inside of our classrooms right now. You are centering student voice. You're promoting um, accountability, uh, meaning that you know you want to make sure that you're holding students accountable for their actions, and then vice versa. And then you want to increase their ability to have strong reading comprehension skills. So I love graphics and um, love you know just having discussions around that. So I want you to give um, I want to give you about a minute uh, to look at this graphic, and then what conclusions can you draw from this image? So after you've gotten a chance to look at it, feel free to drop it in the chat box. What conclusion can you draw from this image? Yes, thank you, uh, Thomas. We learn to listen before we read. Absolutely. Yep, listening is more intuitive than reading. Yep, that's the first thing that we um, are doing. Like it's listening before we actually start to read. Um, Catherine, thank you for sharing. Young children have better listening comprehension, but as one gets older, reading comprehension becomes an important part of learning information. Yes. Um, Emily shared and said listening comprehension develops first. Once reading comprehension, sorry, comes in, if the listening is strong, reading is strong. Uh, around 13, we both have the same level. Absolutely. And then children begin to listen at a very young age and around six, um, they begin to read. Absolutely. Anyone else would like to share? <laughs> yes, I do. I do want to say something. I, I'm just, I just came in, um, but I am with deaf and hardy hearing, and so. Um, I know language deprivation is an issue for, uh, especially with the early intervention, and that can affect clearly the literacy skills for our students. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, at first, uh, I got teenager bad listeners, and then Bradley shared, does it plateau after age 13? And that's a question that um, I think I have a lot of times with educators about, you know, when does that reading comprehension and listening comprehension, does it continue to grow as we get older or does it just flatten out? Um, but also I forgot to mention in the beginning, sorry, um, I am a former educator. I taught kindergarten in first grade um, back in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so yes, when I was teaching the kindergartners, that's the first thing that we were doing. We were just listening, um, listening for sounds, uh, listening for you know different sight words and words that we were building out before we even got to uh, the students actually, you know, reading the text. So thank you all for sharing. And, uh, you know, I just love that this graphic because um, as you can see, it's super obvious that, you know, in the early stages of our lives, it's all about listening and us trying to acquire things. And Veronica shared, listening still plays a role in comprehension throughout grade school and beyond. Yes, even as adults, we are still learning how to be sharp listeners. And a lot of times also we're learning how to comprehend our reading as well. All right, I think we're receiving, okay, thank you. Uh, so now we're gonna dive into the type, 
types of listening. So you all know we have active listening and we have passive listening. But for today, we're going to really focus on this active listening portion. So listeners demonstrate their understanding of what the other speaker is trying to explain. So when we are actively listening, we really are honing in for maybe those key words that we need to be able to um, have to explain what the other person is talking about. Um, and then um, in connecting it to Soundtrap, um, you'll see today how you'll be able to record actual audio. And then you can set up um, you know, sections inside of the project where students can respond to it. They can listen to it first and then they can respond and explain um, you know, what, whatever you're asking them to do. So some active listening questions um, to think about when you are getting ready to ask your students different questions about whatever text they may be reading or whatever scenario you all are working through. Thinking about how do I usually, usually listen? Why do I need to listen now? Who or what is the focus in this conversation? So if we're reading a text, who are the characters and you know what is maybe the plot and what is what would you be focusing on? And then last thing, what am I missing in this um in this, uh, the, the text that I may need to respond to the speaker. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is, um, we're going to do a quick listening activity where I'm gonna play an episode of a podcast called The Unexplainable Disappearance of Mars Patel. Um, inside of the actual bio that I shared, you'll be able to access this dot, um, this deck. And so then you can go back and you can listen to this uh, complete episode with your student as well. See, maybe that's, I hope that's not me. No, if you're, um, if you could mute yourself, I'm not sure who that is, but it's like a staticky sound. All right, so I'm going to play, um, let's see. Yes. Uh, no, this isn't part of the presentation at all. The the staticky noise, I'm not listening. Okay, yep. Got it. All right, so we're gonna play, I'm gonna play a quick um, snippet of this. As you are listening, I want you to think about these questions on the right-hand side. So how long have the characters not heard from their friend? What are some character names do you hear? What sounds or voices do you hear? And do these sounds help paint a picture of what's going on? So as you're listening to this, uh, this snippet of this episode, I want you to be thinking about those questions on the right-hand side. Three. Mars and his pals, Jonas and Caddy, haven't heard from their friend Aurora in... How long has it been, Mars? Five days. Five days what? You know what he's talking about, Jonas. Oh, great. He's on the Aurora thing again. It's not the Aurora thing. She's gone. A person is made of matter. A person has mass. She's not gone. She's not not gone. Five days since Aurora disappeared. She isn't responding to text or calls. She hasn't posted anything on Instagram all week. There's no one at her house. Just because someone forgets to say goodbye doesn't mean she's missing. I mean, wouldn't her parents be freaking out? We don't even know where they are. Caddy. You feel me on this, right? I always feel you, Mars, whether I like it or not. And you're sure you didn't have one of your weird vibes from her in the locker room? No, Aurora was like she always is, in her own world. Drawing in that sketchbook when you're supposed to be getting changed. But she said she'd be right out, and then she wasn't. It still doesn't make any sense. Where did she go? I'm probably going to regret saying this. <laughs> Attention, students and faculty, this is a code red. All right, so going back to the questions that I asked, um, I'm going to ask two questions due to timing, but how long have the characters not heard from their friend? Feel free to drop that in the chat box. So how long have the characters not heard from their friend? Five days, yep. <laughs> and Veronica, <laughs> yeah, in the story. Five days, mm-hmm. All right, the next question that I wanna ask you is, um, what sounds or voices do you hear? So you can, you can either put what sounds do you hear or what voices from characters do you hear? Principal's voice, alarms beeping, 
some kind of alarm. We know that it's some type of a message. Environmental background noise. Mm -hmm. A ball against the wall. Mm. Walking kids in the background. Can I get two more people? Yep, kids talking, laughing, background, uh, pounding, giggling, children giggling, chimes, bells, footsteps, and definitely at a school. Yep, we definitely know that they're at a school just by hearing that bell. The kids talking in a hallway, um, you can hear some type of like giggling inside. So we can infer that they are inside of a school. Thank you all. Moving forward. So if you um, did an activity such as this one where you use some type of small clip, um, from it can be a podcast, it could be an audio book, and you want to then get your students to respond inside of Soundtrap to the questions that you may ask them. Some type of sentence starters could be, in my mind, I see, I wonder why. A conclusion I'm drawing is, I like how the author uses, and this reminds me of. Um, I think it's always important to give your students some type of prep or some type of like sentence starters to help them. Um, I think a lot of times, if we set them up for success, um, they uh, have a better job or they'll do really good at hopefully responding to those questions. And then when we want them to reflect, you know, in the future, they'll have those type of sentence starters in the back of their mind. So they'll know how to respond not only to you, but also maybe to the classmate that they're collaborating with on some type of reflection activity. So moving into a sound trap. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do um, a quick little studio tour inside of Soundtrap. Um, once again, this session is recorded. Also um, in the resources that I'll share at the, at the end, you'll be able to go through and access our YouTube channel. Um, you'll be able to go through and look at our different lesson plans that are there and different mini tutorials to help you out. Share my screen once again. All right. So once you have signed, sorry, let me move this out of the way. Once you have signed inside of Soundtrap, you're going to see um, a main page that looks just like this. This is where all of your projects, when you start to work, will be housed at. Also, your students uh, projects page will look exactly like this. They'll be able to see a list of all the projects they worked on, when they worked on it, who they've collaborated with as well. The only thing that'll be different between you and the, your students um, projects page is on this left hand side. So as you'll see, you may see something that says groups, lesson plans, resources. That's all for you, for the teacher to be able to create the groups or the classes they're working with and also going into the lesson plans and resources that we have. But for today's sake, we're going to go inside and we're going to enter the studio. Yes. Yep. And I'll double check. Yes, Soundtrap will be available inside of Clever, but I will double check and make sure that you have access to it because I know some folks, the lower um, elementary um, students use Clever. So I will double check um, Serene, sorry for pronouncing wrong, Serene, and I will make sure that you all are aware of where to access it at. All right, once you get inside of Soundtrap, you'll go to podcast. And then once you're inside of it, voila, we have a blank and empty canvas. So for thinking about today and the episode that we just listened to with Mars Patel, I'm going to set up a recording that I will want my students to respond to. So I'm going to go over to the left hand side and hit add new track. Voice and mic. And then I'm going to do two things. And this is always good for you as the teacher to do these things and to give your students these tips before they start to record as well. So you're going to go right here to this gear and the speaker. You're going to click on it. You're going to hit start test. Testing one, two, three. That's just going to pick up the volume of your voice. Hit done. And then you're going to go right next to it and make sure that your correct microphone is, is inputted. So a quick little tip about, you know, just the microphones and headphones and, and what's going to give you the best recording. So if you have those wired headphones that go into the side of the Chromebooks, those are perfectly fine. Your students can use those. They can, they can hear. They can record inside of those. If you may have like the really fancy like snowball um, mics that kind of just prop up on the desk, 
You can use those as well. Just make sure that when you go down to the drop down menu, you are selecting the one that's kind of the correct microphone. Now, a microphone that we want to kind of sway away, um, go away against is uh, the type of Bluetooth headphones, I meaning those AirPods or any other type of Bluetooth devices. Because what's going to happen is when you start to record and play it back, there's going to be some type of lag that's there. And we don't want that to um, show up inside of our recording. So the best options are the wired headphones. If you have the really nice, like the snowball headphones that go on the desk, or if you don't have that, students can talk directly to like in to their Chromebook and it'll pick up the sounds that they have. When you are recording, make sure that you're in a quiet space. I know um, we'll be inside of classrooms. Um, so maybe if students are like in a station rotation, um, if there's some type of like maybe empty closet or a corner you can put the students in, that's an option. Also, um, our team, team have seen teachers um, where students have actually placed their jackets over their computer um, and it gives it that kind of like muffled sound so that things in the background, you won't hear it. And then also um, I saw a teacher actually uh, use an empty cardboard box, cut out the side of it, and the students were able to place their laptops inside and then it gave actual really quality sound. So those are just some quick tips about recording before we actually start to record. So now I'm going to click start recording. And before that, I'm going to show you how you can uh, kind of set up your recording introduction um, for your students. So I'm gonna hit start recording. Good morning, students. This is, this is Mr. Grimes here speaking. <clears throat> this week, we are listening to the episode of The Disappearance of Mars Patel. Um, I want you to respond um, to the two questions that I wanna ask you. The first question is, um, how long did they say their friend that was missing? The second question is, can you pick one or tell me one to two sounds or voices that you heard inside of the recording? So that was super quick. I just hit stop recording and then it set up my first track. You'll see it right here. This is everything that I just recorded. So I'm going to hit the red record button off and I'm going to play this back so that you can listen to what it sounds like. Good morning, students. This is, this is Mr. Grimes here speaking. <clears throat> this week, we are listening to the episode of The Disappearance of Mars Patel. So it picked up everything that I was saying inside of there. And then what I can do next is I can label this track just by clicking on the word mic. Teacher instruction. All right, right under it, that's where you can add your student uh, track, what they'll respond to. So you'll click add new track, voice and mic. And then I'm not gonna record the student, but you can go ahead and label this track. So when they get ready to open up the project, they'll know exactly where you want them to record at. So I'll click on mic, I'll put student, respond here. And I've clicked off of it. So once again, like I said, when they open up this project, they'll be able to hear your instructions and then they'll also be able to respond right underneath you. And then once they're done and listen to your instructions, they can just hit mute and then hit record and they can start recording um, their responses. The next thing that I wanna show you all is the loops library. So the loops are um, you know, pre-recorded sounds that are across different genres and different instruments um, that can be found inside of the Soundtrap studio. As we heard in the episode with Mars Patel, the sound is what really kind of like helped us paint a picture because we couldn't see any type of visual. But as you all have described to me, we heard so many different things. And I think the Soundtrap is a way where your students can get really creative and use their imagination to allow the listeners to feel as though they're in whatever type of environment or space they're trying to create. So I'm gonna go over to the right-hand side Right here, this music note. And then we're gonna see a lot of different loop sounds. So you can preview these by just hitting play. Let's see if I wanted to hear like a drum. Go all the way down, I can scroll. We have over 13,000 different combinations that students can use. So they'll never really get tired of figuring out which sounds they want to use.
All right, so one thing to mention about the sound. So if I wanted to just hear sounds, then you can see, I can see if it were an airplane flying by, we can hear a baby crying. We can hear battle horn. And we can hear bicycle bell as well. So you can take the time uh, once you get a chance to go inside a sound trap and listen to the different sound effects that we have to be able to um, put some color behind your voice. The next thing that I wanna show you is the collaboration feature. So right under the loops library, you have the collaboration button where your students for those smaller groups, if you are working with a smaller group and you want them to respond to some type of like texture reading or you want them to work on some type of activity, you can actually set up the groups. So you go to collaboration, you click invite, and then you either type the name or the email address of the student or students that you want to be a part of this assignment. Now, something that I wanna mention about collaborations, um, to protect you know, students, their data, their privacy, and make sure they're actually like safe inside of Soundtrap, um, you, students can only collaborate with students that are part of their group. They can only collaborate with folks that are inside of their classroom or the group that you create. So that's just like a tip that I wanted to add in there. And once you start to create, you can see that, okay, I only want my students to work with each other. Now for maybe the upper grades or maybe starting at like third, third grade and up, give students opportunity to um, form their own group. So maybe that's a student job where you can say, okay, we have a group of four and you're like student A, I want you to set up the group. Um, I, want, I want you to set up your group um, inside of Soundtrap so that you all can collaborate with each other. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to title my project. So I'm going to say Mars Patel. Click right out of it. And then the next part that we're going to do is we're going to look at this transcription feature. Now, this is a, um, a part where um, I was actually blown away when I first saw this, and it's going to be super helpful when you're going back in the editing phases or when your students actually want to be able to see um, what they actually recorded. So a lot of times in, in a, a lot of other different like recording devices, you have to send the transcript off to somebody, they have to go through it, and then it's just so much back and forth. Or sometimes you have to manually sit there and write. But inside of Soundtrap, it'll turn your audio into text. So what you'll want to do is you want to go down to the left hand side in the corner, transcript. You're going to want to hit select the voice track. And then you're going to want to transcribe the teacher instructions. So you can transcribe the, you can, uh, transcribe the teacher instructions. When the student responds, they can transcribe their text as well. So hit transcribe. Then we're going to confirm it. And it usually takes about a minute for everything to load up. So now I'm going to replay this track that I recorded and I want you to pay attention to the screen in the center. Good morning, students. This is, this is Mr. Grimes here speaking. <clears throat> this week, we are listening to the episode of The Disappearance of Mars Patel. We got it there. You're able to now see the text. It flashes along with it. So for those students that may be visual learners, they can actually see and follow along thinking about tracking inside of the text. Also, it helps going back to the active listening part that we talked about where they're able to actually listen into you know, whatever questions you're asking them and they can replay this back over and over again. The last thing that I wanna talk about with transcription is the kind of editing piece. So let's say that I am uh, responding to a text and I'm like, uh, I don't like those first two sentences or I don't like how I responded to that, but I wanna keep the second half of my responses, but I really don't like the first half. So what you can do is you can highlight over the text just by highlighting. And then you're gonna hit delete um, on your keyboard. But I want you to pay attention to this, to this track right here that I recorded. So it took it away just like that. It took out this, the part of the text that has the portion right here, right here. So you can do that with any word. You can do that with any phrase that you may have. You just highlight over the words, its appearance of Mars Patel, 
hit delete, and it takes it out right there in front of you. Now, if you wanted to go back and re uh, record something, let's say at the end, you couldn't just type that at the end. You would have to actually have to drag your tracker here, and then you would record so it'll continue onto that sentence. You can, you can also edit the spelling. So if you wanted to highlight a question, hit the letter E on your keyboard, and then you can go and fix the spelling of that as well. So that's a quick way in which you can use a transcript, a transcription feature. If you wanted to uh, copy and paste this text and put it into a Google Doc, you can just highlight the text, the copy, and then you can take it over into a Google Doc. And that way you'll have a running record of what students have responded to. Um, thinking about those folks that may be, let's say, world language teachers that are looking for ways to improve students' you know, oral responses to assessments that they may have, you can actually record inside of Soundtrap in a different language. So if you go to settings, language, and these are all the languages right now that we offer inside of the Soundtrap Studio. Now, I know there are a lot more languages that may be inside of your school, um, and we're constantly trying to update those languages to meet all the students where they're at. But just wanted to show you that there's a way in which you can set the, the recording to a specific language, and then your students can record. All right, so I see that we are coming up um, around like the 25 minute mark. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can then um, you can save this project and then you can send this out to your students as their first assignment. So I'm going to go to Exit Studio here at the top right. You see my project is loading right here. Mars Hotel is loading. And then I know that because it says it's mixing. Right next to it, you'll see these three dots here. You want to click on them. You'll want to hit Create Assignment. And then it gives you options as to how you can um, create that assignment. So you can go through Google Classroom and it'll literally take you step by step through everything that you need. Or you can actually share the link, share via link, and then you can post that onto your Google Classroom wall. Students can click on that and it'll open up that copy of that project. So something to mention about when they open up the projects for the first time, it'll create a copy for every single student. Um, that is inside of your classroom. So you don't have to create 30 different uh, assignment links. You just send off that one link. They click on it the first time and then they're able to work in inside of the project. Once students are done recording, then what they can do is they just hit save and it'll, it'll update inside of Soundtrap. So you don't have to do it. You don't have to worry about telling them, to, hey, hey, download this project, send it back to me. Nope, every time they hit save, you'll go to this assignment folder and then you'll be able to see um, your students' projects. And then the good thing about this is you don't have to open up the entire studio. You can just hit the play button and then you can listen to it from that way. So I'll stop right there um, and I will address any questions that you all may have, just immediate questions that you have, what's coming to your mind, anything. And if you would like, you can put it inside of the chat box too, if that's what we're comfortable with you. You're not able to send grades, great question. You're not able to send grades from here, but we do have assessment uh, rubrics inside of the Soundtrap. So on that uh, left-hand side, click on resources, you'll be able to see the different uh, rubrics that we've created. But right now you can't actually grade inside of Soundtrap. Great question. When students are responding in Soundtrap, does it automatically collect their name? No. So what they'll want to do is when they open up that project that you share it with them. So let's say here, sorry, I'm going to projects. Go to studio. And so what students will need to do is they'll just need to go to the top and just easily identify themselves so they can put their name and just save. And then when you are going back and look at, looking at it inside of that assignments folder, you'll see, okay, Jocelyn submitted his project, so forth, so forth. No, so 
Uh, no, students can only, so the question was, is it available offline? No, you will need Chrome to be able to use a uh, sound trap. But if students have their phones, they can also um, use the app that we have and they'll be able to kind of go use it on the go. But if they're using it inside of the classroom, they'll need some type of internet connectivity to be able to use SoundTrap. The next question is, will students uh, listening to each other's sound track? So they can, if they wanted to share it with, let's say their partner um, next to them, they can just add them as a collaborator and they can listen to their project. Any additional questions? These are all great questions. And if there's questions that you think of, like I said, just message them to me and then I'll make sure that we um, follow up with you all. I'll share it uh, with Dan or someone on the SFUSD team um, and follow up with you all. Would it be okay to ask if you can show us how to do the Spanish ones or other languages again? Yeah. So you'll go up to settings, go down to language, and then you'll click on the language that you want uh, to use. Now, something to mention about this is <laughs> once you click on the language, it's going to turn the entire studio to that language. So those students that are changing it to that language, they'll just need to be able to kind of pick up on the words or know, you know what those words mean inside the studio. So once again, settings, language, and you'll just click on the language that you want to use. And just to clarify, all the features like, like transcripts specifically will also be available? So, sorry, what'd you say? Sorry. The features like transcribe or mm -hmm. transcript will also be available? Yep, so everything is there. So they, they go down to the bottom uh, left, transcript. They can transcribe and they can do exactly what I did. Your students can delete text. They can edit text as well. Um, yeah. Are we able to copy the words that were written? Yes. So you can, sorry, copy. And then you'll write, sorry, copy. Copy text. And then you can take it into a side of a Google Doc or wherever you need to copy it to. Any other questions that come to the top of mind? Uh, let's see. Yes, so the question was, can each student record in a different language of their own choosing in response to teachers recording in English? Yeah, so what they'll do is they'll just, um, when they get ready to record, you know, respond to your, uh, to your prompt, they'll just need to go to settings, to language, and then they'll need to just set it to that language. And then the next question was, can we publish from here? So you, you can't publish from here, but you can download um, the copy of the project that you're working on. And then you can upload it to, let's say, a Google site. Um, maybe there's a YouTube uh, channel that you are using. So what you'll do is you'll go to um, exit. Let's say I wanted to download this. Then I'll go to studio. And then once it's done mixing, I'll hit download and I'll show you one. So if I go here, download, and then you will have an option where you can download uh, this project as an MP3. And then it'll just download to your desktop and then you can take it uh, to where you need to go next. Which is a perfect segue into showing you kind of two ways how uh, teachers and students have used it in terms of like publishing. So, for the younger students, um, we've had folks do, um, actually in San Francisco Unified, we've had folks do book reviews. So a student has picked a book and they have responded to the book um, inside of Soundtrap, talking about the characters, the plot, what they didn't like about the story, what they did like, and something um, cool um, that they found inside of the text. So like I mentioned, you, you have access to this PDF for this doc, um, and then you'll be able to go through and listen. This is for a kind of upper um, upper grade, so more high school. 
um, there was an actual jazz ensemble who took Amanda Gorman's inaugural poem, and then they um, put some music with it. So another way to kind of paint a picture to what something sounds like. So actually, yeah, let's, let's take a moment. We're, I want to listen to it because I think that you will enjoy this one. I'm afraid the new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. President, Dr. Biden, Madam Vice President, Mr. Emhoff, Americans and the world. Sorry, Justin, you're still muted. Thank you. Um, two um, projects or lessons that you'll find inside of our resources. On the left, there's a project called or an activity called Night at the Museum, where students get a chance to pick different paintings from the Google Arts and Cultural page, and they'll be able to um, add different sound elements to those pictures. So just imagine a, um, a world in which you can you walk into a museum and you're looking at a painting like the one on the left and just imagine what those sounds can sound like. So students can you know, go through and get super creative with that, but also it's a way in which you can showcase what you're doing inside of your classroom. So you may have like a back to school night, you may have parent teacher conferences where you're like, hey, I wanna show you what your student has been working on. And you can post these pictures up around the classroom have a QR code and folks can go up, scan the code, and they can listen to um, what the student um, created based off of this picture. On the right-hand side, we have something called Reader's Theater. And that's another lesson as well, where they can go in and they can practice reading fluency through looking at scripts. So those folks who may be in the arts or just in general, I think this is a really cool one as well to just practice um, reading fluency, whether you are elementary student or you're a high school student. Gotcha. My bad. I'm so sorry. I was on the um, I was on mute. But as I mentioned, I was saying before with the Amanda Gorman piece was take a take a moment when you get a chance to go and listen to the actual uh, project. The students did a really good job at that. And there's some students. They were they did it here. Students in San Diego. It was a group of high school students that worked on this project. So um, before we head out, I want to show you that we have lesson plans inside of Soundtrap um, that you can click on. We have a certified educator course, which I think that'll be super, super helpful um, as you get ready to use Soundtrap. And then we also have a Facebook group. If you're active on Facebook, feel free to join our Facebook group. And folks are always sharing different lessons that they've completed, student projects. Um, a lot of times teachers have whole like unit plans already created that they don't mind sharing. Um, and it's just a good community space where you can just learn more about the different ways in which you can use Soundtrap inside of your classroom. Let's see. Yes, I will link this, uh, my presentation right now. You should be able to find it in the Zoom recording, uh, sorry, the bio section, but I will have it to you right now. Give me a second. Share this. All righty. I just shared the presentation with you, and then I'll also share how you can access Soundtrap. 
So I know a lot of you are just like, okay, how do I use, um, how am I going to be signing up for Soundtrap? Um, the team at SFUSD, SFUSD has done a great job at breaking down the process of signing into Soundtrap. So this is the second link that I'm placing inside of the chat box. And it takes you through um, how to sign up. So I'll share what that looks like so you can see. So um, this is open up to grades three through 12, um, where students can use Soundtrap. It takes you through the instructions. Teacher must have a brand new account if they haven't used Soundtrap last semester. The student must create their accounts. Teacher must then create their own specific Soundtrap group. And then students can join the teacher's group via class code. It takes it step by step. How to you know go to soundtrap.com forward slash edu, how to sign in with your Google address, how to collaborate. And so it, it takes you step by step. So if you have any additional questions and you're like, hey, Justin, I'm stuck. I'm having some type of issues. You can reach out to Ricardo, um, Dan Frost, or you can reach out to myself as well. I'm going to share my email address with you all. Um, you'll find it actually at the end of the deck um, on slide 23. That's the email that you can reach me at, justin at soundtrap.com. So if there are any questions that you have where you're like, hey, Justin, I have this lesson idea in mind, but I don't know how to actually implement it. Um, we can hop on a Zoom, a Google Meet, and we can work through it. And then hopefully, um, you know, next semester, I'll be able to come to actually San Francisco Unified and visit some of you all's classrooms. Um, and last thing, as you start to create, please, please, please share those with me. I would love to just hear what you're working on, what your students are working on, and just see the different ways in which they are using Soundtrap across the different content areas. Um, this is something that isn't just can be used in music, but it can also be used in history, it can be used in science, it can be used in ELA, um, all the different ways in which you can use Soundtrap. And then you will find those ways inside of um, that lesson resources, and you can see the different lessons that have been set up. I thought that we have enough time for you to actually go inside of the Soundtrap Studio, but I just want to open it up one last time for any questions that you may have, any questions that are at the top of your mind that you would like to, to get answered. Thank you all. Uh, once again, thank you for coming today. Uh, if you could, um, I know that you're probably going to fill out a survey um, on your own, but if you could take the time on that slide 23 to fill out that survey and just figure out ways in which I can get better, um, what you like about the session, what you didn't like, um, and then also my email address is attached on slide 23 as well. For any additional questions or you're just like, hey, Justin, I want to share what we're doing. Uh, thank you all so much and uh, have a great um, school year. Thank you.